Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I thought I would show you how I go about making my cookie cutters. All right, I've had a lot of requests from people asking me how I make my cookie cutters. And I tell them the same thing. I grow them in my garden and I sprinkle them with unicorn dust. Unicorn dust is when you shave the horn of a, of a unicorn down and you get the dust and it's really good for plants. You should try it. Actually, what I do is I use Illustrator and Photoshop. I then take what Photoshop gives me and I put it into my slicing program. I export it as a printable file and then I put it on the printer and print it. It's really that simple. This tutorial aims to give you a general overview and to take you through something very quickly. It's going to assume that, here, I'll type it out so you can, you can actually follow along here. It's, first of all, it's going to assume that you know how to kind of use Illustrator, right? So Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator is, is hard it's it is hard look at that i'm just i don't know what i'm doing it's going to assume you know how to use illustrator um if you don't tell me and hey maybe i'll make a more in-depth tutorial with that said illustrator is hard hard illustrator is hard and by that i mean it's hard i don't understand it I know how to use Photoshop, and I thought, hey, if I know how to use Photoshop, I know how to use Illustrator. That is wrong. That is very, very wrong, and I couldn't be more wrong. Last, but not least, don't give up. I say that because with Illustrator being hard, you may get frustrated, and you may just say, I'm not going to use this. Don't do that. I felt that way about Illustrator for quite a while until I sat down and took the time. Easy enough. All right. In Illustrator, I've already acquired an image and I've already image traced it and it's given me this. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Barnacles. Barnacles is a uh, a YouTube guy I follow. He, he's 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 quite smart in the ways of 3D printing. He likes to demo um, drones, and uh, he just he makes great videos on YouTube. If you get a chance, check him out. I'll put his link down in the description. So here's Barnacles. This is his face, and it's a vector. It's easy for uh, a, th a 3D printer to use a vector, and Illustrator works in vectors. What you want to do to create a cookie, a cookie cutter is you want to have these three things. You want to have a stamper layer, and that's the layer that makes the imprint in the cookie. You want to have a cutter layer. The cutter layer is going to be a line that exists roughly three millimeters outside of the general shape. The size of the line is dependent on your printer. For me, I found that line at 0.75 millimeters works best. Last but not least, you're going to want a base layer. The, the base layer is what holds all of the cookie cutter pieces together. You'll notice that the, the chin and the mouth and the eyebrows, they ex if, if you were to print those right now, they would exist in free space and they would just fall off and you'd throw them away and that would be sad. So instead, create a base layer with lines that tie together all of the pieces that are floating in, in midair. You'll see what I mean, and it'll be more true once we go to the next step. Once you have this setup complete, bring up Photoshop and emulate the layers. I have a stamper, I have a cutter, and I have a base layer. So within, uh, within, boy, I can't talk. Within Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to copy the stamper layer after I select it. I'm gonna go to Photoshop, select the stamper layer, and paste. It's going to ask me what I want to paste as. I want to paste as a path. On the 3D tab, I choose 3D extrusion, and the source is going to be work path. And then I hit create. For the stamper layer that you just extruded into 3D space, you want the extrusion depth to be 9 millimeters. 
Once you got that down, follow that process for the cutter and the base layer. Here I'll do the cutter, go to Photoshop, I go to cutter, paste as a path. On the tab for 3D, I go 3D extrusion, source work path, and I create. For the cutter, the extrusion, the extrusion depth should be 12.25 millimeters. Last but not least is the base layer. Go back into Illustrator, select the base layer, copy, go to Photoshop, select the base layer here, paste as a path. On the 3D tab, 3D extrusion, source, work path, hit create. The base layer being at the bottom, we want the extrusion depth to be 1.75 millimeters. When you're done with that, select all three layers, go up to 3D, and merge 3D layers. And there we go. We now have merged 3D layers. The stamper, the cutter, and the base. These now exist as 3D objects in a scene. Select all three. Go up to the Properties button. On the X-axis, you want to rotate negative 90 degrees. Last but not least, select each object individually and click move to ground. That sets up the cookie cutter and makes it all, it, it sets up the cookie cutter and puts it on the ground level so that everything is in the right place. And you'll notice as you rotate around and zoom in a bit, you can see that, hey, look at that. This is our 3D object. This is our Barnacles cookie cutter. You can see that the lines here, connect everything in free space. You can see that the cutter itself is taller than the stamper, and you can see that the base underneath connects all the pieces. One of the questions I get asked is, hey, why is everything separated from the cutter? Why is the cutter all alone? If I, un if I hide the base and I hide the stamper, the cutter exists outside of everything, and I get asked that a lot, and I say, well, the reason I make the cutter separate from the stamper is so that you can use any thickness dough you want. Some people like thin, crunchy cookies. Some people, like my wife, like thick, soft, chewy cookies. Most cookie cutters that are one piece say you have to roll your dough a specific thickness. So rather than that, I use two-piece cookie cutters so that you can use any thickness dough you want and therefore have any cookie style you want. I'm awesome. No, you're awesome. Now that we've done that part, we select the scene, we go to the print button, we want to print to local, export to STL, and I say that because Photoshop can print to some 3D printers, just not mine, so I export to an STL file. Detail level of high, and print. Once I hit this button, it's going to crunch for a bit. It looks like Photoshop is done crunching through everything. It brings up the Photoshop 3D print settings. And at this point, we can rotate around our 3D model. And this is what Photoshop is going to put into an STL file for me to add to my slicer. That looks about right. I'm going to export and save it off and bring it into my slicing program. Once you have your slicing program loaded, I use Simplify 3D, import the STL file. And there it is. It drops it onto the virtual build plate and it kind of gives you a representation of what it's going to look like. From there, you can prepare to print. Once it's done crunching through, it will give you a representation of what the printer tool head will print on the print bed itself. That doesn't look too bad. It says it's going to take a little under two hours. I guess that gives us time to do lots of stuff while Barnacles here prints. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that um, I hope that you you get a chance to use Illustrator, and I hope you get a chance to use Photoshop, and I hope you get a chance to be creative and to create cookie cutters and and other things that 3D printers can make. 
If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment or hit me up on any of the social networks. I'm pretty easy to find. Thanks for watching, and high five!